Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Continuing uh, talking about different trigonometric functions, today is uh, about second. Well, second is, by definition, one over cosine phi of the, of the angle for any angle. Since cosine is defined for any angle, this is also defined for almost any angle, obviously for those angles where cosine is not equal to zero. A different definition, absolutely equivalent, based on the unit circle. So if you have an angle phi, now the cosine is abscissa, which is this x coordinate. So, in this case, second is defined as 1 over x. Now, obviously, if uh, the angle is between 0 and pi over 2, in the first quadrant, um, abscissa is positive, as well as in the fourth quadrant, when an angle is greater than 3 pi over 2. And other cases, second and third quadrant, um, the abscissa is equal to is negative. And when it's negative, obviously the second is negative as well. Okay, so, so much about definition. This is simple thing and it's basically sufficient to analyze. Or the unit circle doesn't really matter. Okay, so next thing is to uh, talk about properties when the function grows, when the function decreases its values, where it's defined, what, what's the range, etc. All right. Um, as far as uh, domain of the function, let me start with cosine, the graph of the cosine. Okay, now the cosine goes like this. This is minus one. So, first of all, wherever the cosine is equal to zero, function is not defined, our second function, because sec second is, again, 1 over cosine. So, the domain is x not equal to pi over 2, or minus pi over 2, or 3 pi over 2, which is generalized as pi over 2 plus pi times n, where n is any integer. Alternatively, you can say that domain is defined on this interval without edges, on this interval without both ends, etc. Which means that x is strictly less than minus pi over 2 plus pn plus pi over 2 plus pn, where n any integer. So for n equals to 0, we have from minus pi to pi, which is from here to here, when n, n is equal 1, that would be pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, which means from this to this. And since these are strict inequalities, the points are not included. So the union of this for all integer n's of this particular interval, if you wish. I mean, you can basically symbolize it as this. This is a domain. This is simpler, obviously. Now, as far as the range, now we have to really investigate how the 
uh, the function grows. So let me do another graph here. And what I will do, I will um, analyze how the cosine is changing its values. And then correspondingly, I will invert these values to get into the second. Now, where the cosine is equal to 1, obviously, inverted value is 1 as well. Then the cosine goes down to 0 at pi over 2. Well, so inverted value would go to infinity, obviously, because this is denominator. It goes to 0, which means the, uh, the ratio goes to uh, infinity, which means that we have an asymptote at p over 2. It goes like this. Now, symmetrically, if you wish, you can put another asymptote as minus pi over 2, and obviously, gain function goes this way, so inverted function goes this way. Well, next. Next, we are jumping over point x equals to pi over 2, because that's where the function cosine is equal to 0 and second is undefined. But what's important is the absolute value of denominator around this point is zero. It's positive on the left and negative on the right side of the pi over two, which means inverted would be close to uh, infinity or tends to infinity. When we are approaching this point from the left, it would be positive infinity. If we are approaching from the right to the same point pi over two, we will go to minus infinity. So this asymptote is continuing. And it goes like this. And obviously at point pi, where the cosine is equal to minus 1, second is also equal to minus 1. Then the situation kind of repeats itself. Uh, this is 3 pi over 2. This would be another asymptote. And obviously, as the function increases uh, in value um, to 0, the inverted function would decrease to infinity with a minus sign since cosine is negative. So it goes like this. And then it repeats basically this particular thing. It's uh, so it's 2 pi, it's 1, obviously, and it goes this way to the next asymptote. Similarly, here, I will have minus. So this is a graph of a second. It's inverted relative to the cosine. Wherever the cosine is 1 or minus 1, Second is also 1 or minus 1, or 1 or minus 1. And wherever the cosine goes to 0, the inverted second goes to infinity, and it's plus infinity or minus infinity, depending on uh, the sign of the cosine. So what's the range of this function? Well, obviously the range is everything which is greater or equal than 1, uh, and unionized with less than or equal to minus 1. In one simple inequality, you can have absolute value of y greater than equal to 1. That's what basically it means, that y is greater or equal to 1, or less than or equal to minus 1. This uh, interval from minus 1 to 1 is not in this range. Function cannot, uh, cannot take any value from minus 1 to 1. So that's basically how the function behaves, and that's probably the most important you know, part of this lecture. Um, what else? Where this function is equal to 1? Well, obviously at 0 and a period of 2 pi. Or you can say that y is equal to, to, to 1, to, uh, I, I meant 1, I'm not sure what I said. Um, for x is 
uh, pi n, where n is even. And the function is equal to minus 1 at this point, at pi, 3 pi, etc., where x is equal to pi n, where n is odd. Well, I could have write it, um, I could have written it differently. I can cap x is equal to 2 pi n, where n is anything, uh, any integer, and 2 pi, uh, and the uh, pi times 2n plus 1, where um, n is any integer. So I'll just express as a formula, even or odd. Or I can just use the words to specify this. So this is where function is equal to 1 or minus 1. Well, basically, that's it. Um, now the properties of uh, related to periodicity. Um, Asymptotes, yeah, asymptotes are at pi over 2 plus pi n. So asymptotes are um, x is equal to pi over 2 plus pi n, where n is any integer. So this, 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 etc. Okay, fine. Now let's talk about some other properties. Almost done with this. Actually, we don't need graphs at all. I'll explain differently. Um, I usually try to specify what would be with these type of values or this type of values or this type of values. Well, these two are very much related. Now, here is a very important property of the cosine. Cosine is even function. Cosine of plus x and cosine of minus x are exactly the same. Uh, the easiest way to basically not to remember it, but just to derive this function, the cosine is uh, uh, an abscess, uh, which means that uh, it's x coordinate. So plus angle or minus angle would go into the same uh, x coordinate, abscess. So since cosine is even function, second is also an even function. It does not change the sign if argument changes the sign. So this is equal to x minus pi. I don't really need this. OK. Now, let's compare this second of pi minus x with second of x. Um, if this is my f, if this is my angle phi, and this is x. Now, pi minus x, it would be if we will go from this position by the same angle, right? So what happens with abscissa with x coordinate? If you change this point to this point, if these two angles are uh, congruent, well, obviously, this will change the sign. It's very easy to prove the uh, congruence of these two triangles, which means that would be minus set of x. It's always easy to imagine whatever you need with an acute angle, and starting from this acute angle, do whatever is necessary for these type of manipulation. So if, if phi is acute angle, that pi minus uh, x or pi minus phi would be the angle which is on the left side of the y-axis. 
Now, and if you understand what's this relationship for acute angle, you just transfer it blindly to any other angle because trigonometric functions are defined properly, which means whatever is true for acute angle, this type of relation, it's, it's usually, and not usually, it's always actually, uh, the same for any kind of an angle. That's why we have defined it this way. It's a proper definition. Now, how about this one? Well, you can do it geometrically as well. Now, if this is phi, then this would be phi plus phi, right? Which means it will also have, these are vertical angles, by the way. Because the because it's a straight line, you add pi to the phi, which means it's a straight line. So again, triangles are geometrically congruent, and the only thing is different. This uh, x coordinate of this point would be negative. So it's also minus sec second of x. Now a different way to prove it would be to use the periodicity sec of x plus pi is equal to sec of x plus pi plus pi minus 2 pi, right? 2 pi is a period. So I can add to the argument 2 pi or subtract uh, from the argument 2 pi. We'll have exactly the same value. And this is sec of x minus pi. And I have already determined that this is minus second of x, right? Same thing. So this is kind of a more you know, algebraic way of deriving this thing. And the one before was more geometrical. Way. All right. Um, anything I missed? No, I, did, I think that's basically, that, that's basic properties of second. Um, I think what's very important, actually, as far as remembering is second is 1 over cosine. Same thing is you have to remember the tangent is sine over cosine, and cotangent is the other way around. Uh, you have to remember the second is one over cosine by definition, and the cosecond is one over sine. That would be the next lecture. It's not too much to remember, but basically I mean it's a definition, so you can't really derive it from anything using some logic. There is no logic here. It's just a definition and the words so you have to remember. It. Uh, okay, that's it for today, and the next lecture will be about um, cosecond, which would end my introduction to trigonometric functions. These are all kind of introductory lectures, because yeah, I'm just explaining the properties. I'm not solving any equations, uh, proving any theorems, or anything like that. These are all trivial properties. Anyway, thank you very much, and good luck.